I have no idea why I'm doing this in the rain from the top of my car. Oh. The DRL Racer 2. This thing is hilarious because it actually looks like they just strapped props to a brick with lights on it and started flying it around. So I previously had the Racer 3 and I also have this one which is the Racer 3S. It's not the Racer 3 and um, this is these are some pretty interesting findings I found out with this one which is similar to the findings that we had when we were designing our um, D DCL racer. Anyways, there's a couple of, there's a lot of things, a lot of things coming. I have a lot of stuff. I'm really backed up with videos. More information about the toothpick is coming. You see, I've been testing these giant batteries on here. It is raining also. Also, some new props from Gemfan. Also, some new props from Azure coming and these Flywoo motor. Lots of stuff coming. But let's first, first focus on <laughs> the racer 2. This is pretty amazing. Uh, let's do a quick rundown of the thing. So when this thing was out, they didn't have the new GoPro set. The session didn't exist. That's how old this is. I think it was 2014, 2015. I don't know. So long ago. I don't even know how long ago it was. Uh, so I had this little seat here, this couch for a regular GoPro. Now, this thing uses an 1800 milliamp 4S battery because that was the typical drivetrain that we would run back then. It's also running the Cobra 2204 motors, which later on we then discovered are actually 2205 motors. They're not really 2204 motors. They just did a fast one on everybody <laughs> and everybody's wondering why this motor makes so much more power. Anyways, old stuff. Most of you people probably don't even know anything about that. It's raining right now, so I'm gonna take in all the other stuff. One second. Everybody wants to know how this thing compares to the new, the new racers and other quads and how it flies today by today's standards. Well, first I'd like to talk about what our findings were when we were designing the DCL quad. Now DCL Drone Racing Ch DC Drone Champions League is an organization that's very similar to DRL, but kind of on a little bit smaller scale. They do very similar races. They put a lot of production value and production effort into their races. They have a lot of money to spend on making the production really, really nice. And they also have a similar chunky spec as DRL. So DRL builds all their own quads. They do all this stuff themselves. But DCL just says that everybody has to have their quads within a certain spec. And their spec is basically a massive quad with a bunch of lights and uh, at least 800 grams. And that's what we were designing for when we were designing the uh, PuroFlip DCL quad. And through our testing, we discovered that five inch props were better. I mean, the frame is large enough to spin eight inch props. However, we found that five inch props felt better in the air, 
was faster on the track and didn't give us less flight time. We only need to fly for one minute anyways, but it didn't give us less flight time on a racetrack compared to larger props. And so we went with five inch props. And then we discovered when we actually got to the race, when they got to the race, I didn't go unfortunately, that everybody else is running five inch props as well. So I figured that they all came to the same conclusion. And over here, I'm shocked to say that that is the same conclusion I came to with this DRL Racer 2. I cannot believe it, but this thing flies. I, again, I love the uh, DRL, I love everything they do. <laughs> and it's a spec class at the end of the day. But this thing flies significantly better than the Racer 3. That is a real shock because this is using smaller motors, these garbage twin blade bullnose props that are from forever ago. It weighs more, it weighs like a solid one kilogram with that old GoPro on the front. And it has 4S, it doesn't even have 5, like it's worse. In every way, it's worse than the Racer 3. However, it's far more controllable. I, I would say it might even be faster than the Racer 3. Now, I think a lot of that might have to do with the fact that the Racer 3 has massive, chunky arms on it. But if I was choosing one to race with, I would prefer to race with this one. Now, it does have an Ace 32 in it from forever ago. And I did have a couple complications getting it to actually work again because I think it actually had clean flight. I don't even know if it had beta flight on it, but I couldn't connect to the flight controller to set it up and figure out what's going on. I actually had to flash it, unfortunately. I couldn't leave it totally stock. I had to flash it with, what I did flash it with was the oldest available beta flight firmware that the actual firmware interface, the configurator would give me. And so that is from February of 2017. So it's running stock default settings from February of 2017 on a NAS32 at 1K, 1K rates. So yeah, it's not the best performing. It's also running, I'm pretty sure Simon K ESCs from forever ago. And that's, a, that's just not good by today's standards in any sense. And uh, the wobbling that you see when I'm flying around, that's actually the wobbling of the quad. So flying something like this, this old, that just can't maintain its attitude in the air well because the code is bad, because everything's, yes, these are not, just nothing is working as optimally as we now know that it can work. It's really hard to fly it smooth because you're fighting this wobble and you just have to kind of roll with it. Just let it wobble through the turn. <laughs> just let it do its thing. And yeah, I could probably sit here and tune the PIDs and try to get it to fly better. But now, I mean, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just not going to do that. Okay, let me take the thing apart and I'll show you a little bit what's inside. The reason I'm taking it apart is for a couple reasons. Number one, to show you how ancient everything is on the inside because it is running Crossfire. It's running Crossfire from forever ago. That is the Crossfire receiver. I actually had to update it through the USB port and it updated fully and it bound to my Crossfire. So massive kudos to TBS for making everything backwards compatible because that is awesome. Uh, I also don't know if this is still the VTX that they were using. It's the TS whatever, whatever. Uh, and the other thing you will notice in here is that these side panels that are all LEDs, these are custom made by DRL and they all, they plug in with these, these, uh, like, I guess JST, like servo pins. And so you're not even seeing the components, all the components of the quad are actually underneath here, which is super slick. And the, the, the uh, flight controller just kind of solders in really hard to show here. I'm really not going to take it apart. I'm way too lazy for that. But the flight controller just solders right into that main board. Similar to the Racer 3, they have this all-in-one kind of board that everything solders to. And the ESCs are down there. They're really crummy ESCs by today's standards. Uh, there's also this power management board in there, just like the Racer 3 for all the LEDs, I'm assuming. And everything plugs in with JSTs. But something you'll notice is that this thing kind of falls apart if it's not together. And it's extravagantly difficult to maintain. And that's the main thing I'm, want, I'm trying to show here is how annoying this build would be to number one, build, and number two, maintain. I really, really cannot say this enough. The heroes of the DRL everything are the people that build and maintain these quads. I mean, this is such an enormous amount of work. It's just... I mean, if I was doing it, I'd be like, no, this is ridiculous. Make the design better. Oh, I gotta get the umbrella. 
I cannot deal with all this mumbo jumbo. I would ask to definitely simplify something. Get the LEDs some other way because there's too many pieces here to put it together. But then again, that's just me and I'm very picky and particular about the way I do things. So yeah, this is a um, blast to the past and I'm, I'm really surprised. I'm surprised and not surprised at the same time because I should have realized that this was going to be the finding that I was going to have when I originally flew it. However, I was expecting it to be just completely not good. <laughs> I was expecting it to be just complete rubbish, but it's definitely not. It actually is quite fun to fly, even with all its wobbles and bobbles and everything. It took me, the first flight that I had on it, I was kind of, I was, I was expecting it to be really horrible. So I was expecting to only fly it once and be done with it. But then I was like, wait, this isn't, this isn't actually bad. And then I realized all the things that we were going through when we were testing the DCL quad and then I gave it another shot and I put another battery in it and I then realized no this is actually good this is a lot better than the Racer 3 and that's 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 really really interesting to me so I have the Racer 3 S I'm going to be testing that I will test that on 5 inch props as well maybe I'll have something really interesting to report there uh, I do know that they're coming out with a new racer as well the Racer 4 Maybe I'll have that in the near future. That would be really, really awesome. Anyways, um, ask all the questions that you'd like. I now have a Racer 2, and I also have a Racer 3S. However, you guys know, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I don't really hold... I like the nostalgia of all this, and I really would love to hold on to everything, but that would mean that I would need a lot of space to hold on to all these things, and I don't really know what to do with these quads I know that they're very rare and people would really love to have the ability or the option to buy them or pick them up, even just as souvenirs. However, I, I, I really can't, I have so much stuff, I can't hold on to everything. I do want to give them away or sell them for like um, charity profit or something. Like, I don't know what to do with them. Let me know what you think I should do with them and uh, I'll consider it because uh, they are very rare, they are very unique. And I think maybe like a charity sale giveaway kind of thing wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, I hope this was as interesting for you as it was for me. I'm really excited to fix and fly the Racer 3S. However, I know that one has a lot more gizmos in it. So I don't know if I can actually bind to it and fly it, it properly. But I'm assuming they sent me one that I can. So we'll see. Um, a lot more to come. Take care. Don't forget to floss your teeth. Bye-bye.